Hello fellow slot racers. Welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tips video. Today's video is about finishing off the tires that you might have seen us glue up in a previous video. So here I have a donut that I've glued up onto a hub and in today's video we're going to trim that down and trim it up so that it's nearly ready for racing. You can see I've got my hoodie tire truer. I've got a couple of diamond flat hones. I've got my Allen wrench and a new development here which is a Cleave Tech tire trimmer that clips onto a hoodie tire truer. Uh, it's not quite the final design yet but I've been using it to trim my tires to some great success. Uh, so I'm thinking about releasing it as a product very soon. So let's get tire truing. So after you've glued up your donut onto your hub, which I've done another video for, um, if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link on the screen now and you can go and watch that video first. But hopefully by now you've glued up all your donuts onto your hubs and you're ready to trim them off. So first stage is to remove all the excess rubber on the back of the wheel and the front of the wheel uh, that we don't need and also the diameter. Now that can be rather tedious if you're just going to sand it all away on your tire trim and can take ages. So the best way to do is to cut it off as fast as you can and then all you've got to do left to do is to smooth up the surface and finish it to your ideal size. So this is why I made this little tool here which clips onto my hoodie tire truer. Now if you haven't got a hoodie tire truer then there are other tire truers um, available that have things like this built in to do this job. And I know you can get other additions to a hoodie uh, to help you do this, but I just thought this was a nice, quick and easy thing for me to use. And I'll show you how to use it uh, on my hoodie tire truer. I'll put a couple of pics on the screen of other tire truers uh, that you might have. As I say, they have other attachments. My hoodie did come with a bar across here and a little knife attachment that slides in uh, to trim your uh, excess width off of your donuts. But that was a bit of a pain in the neck. It kept getting in the way when I was trying to trim my tires. You had to move it from side to side to adjust it for the different widths all the time. It was a bit of a pain in the neck. So uh, I just removed it and I do it in this other method. So I'm gonna hook this onto my tire truer. So hook that over there, clip it down like that. And then that's solidly uh, clipped in there. Then I can attach my wheel to the axle. Bear with me, because I'm reaching around the camera here. Push that on. Now I'm putting that all the way onto that boss. I'll just get that engaged in the grub screw, yeah. So I'm pushing that all the way onto that boss and I'm lining it up with the grub screw here on this left hand side here. So the grub screw on the pulley is lined up with the grub screw on the wheel or the hub. That way I know where it is when I've finished trimming. So let's just tighten that in there. Okay, as I say, it's a bit more awkward reaching around the camera, but I think we're there. So you should be able to see that in place there, see that grub screw hole there. Now, I'm going to start by trimming down the width of my donut. So I have a craft knife here with a sort of thin blade on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my wheels round and I'm going to bring that blade down in that slot. And that slot there, that's my 30 second scale width. If I was going to do 24th, then I would use the wider slot there. But as you can see, this donut that's on this tire is barely wide enough for a 24th uh, car anyway. So let's start it off. Hopefully the sound won't be too bad. So I'm running at about nine volts. I like to run my tire through a quite fast. So then I'm going to bring my knife down, back to the slot. There we go, and I've trimmed the back off. And I'm going to put it in this other slot, bring it down. 
and there we go, I've now trimmed the front of it off. It's as quick as that. Now I'm not going to remove it at this stage because I'm also going to do the diameter of the tyre as well. But if I rotate it round, I don't know whether you can see now, but I've got a little bit of overhanging rubber like that. Now I like to leave my tyres quite wide and then finish them off with the sander afterwards. But as I say this is still in its prototype stage, this little adapter here, but I might move it in a fraction because they probably are still a little bit too wide at the moment. I've left too much rubber either side of the hub. So turn it round so I can get it in focus again on the camera. There we go. And this time, I'm going to use my little pin here. I don't know whether you can, you can see it, but I'm gonna slide that in, reaching around the camera again here. Push that in like that, and basically that's just going to go through the rubber. There we go. That's done. Bring it back and stop. And then you can see how I've taken off a whole a whole diameter of the rubber, and I've got my donut down to a much more manageable size so that I can sand it up to the right size. And then basically, I would just do that for all the donuts that I've got um, until I get them all the nice size to start with. Then I can think about trimming them up to the exact size. Just to show you what this little pin actually did, as you bring the pin through, as you can see here, there we go. So can you see it sliding through? That obviously cuts the tyre as it's spinning and that's what trims it all off to the rough size to start with. Now this is set for around about 18 millimetres so let's just see what size the one that I've taken off is set to. Not too bad, 17.99. You can see it's a little bit loose at the top so we're probably talking, yeah, 17.9, pretty much diameter to start, which is plenty big enough for most slot racing. So I've just removed the Clevetech tyre trimmer from my hoodie, and I'm just about to set my hoodie up to get my tyres to a size that's closer to where I want them. So you can see I've mounted my hub back on my tyre trimmer, now my hoodie's got what something called a knob job on it and that is where these two standard hoodie knobs have been replaced. Now for setting it up this is this little knob here the one with the numbers on is wound all the way in so that this is this little thread there is sticking out as far as it can be so that's the biggest the tire can possibly be. Now it's not touching the drum at this point. Now, in order to work out my sizes, what I did was that I wound it all the way out like this, and then I'd taken a donut and I'd trued it up and I've measured the size of the donut at that point. But you could also use a pair of calipers between the axle and the drum and you can work out what diameter your tire would be at that point. Then I started to allow it to wind in a bit. So let's go one whole turn. So, at one whole turn, for example, then I tr obviously trued down to that one whole turn, measured my donut again. In fact, I actually did a few points along the way. So when you start writing down your sizes, you get an idea of how much smaller the tyre becomes with each marking or each turn of the wheel. So I'm going to keep going one more turn. So that will actually be two turns and you could say 0.5 if you wanted to start at 0.5 so this that's 2.5 turns now that brings me pretty much to a tire that's that's 18 millimeters in diameter i know that because i've measured it and i've plotted that before and i, I basically i took those points and i plotted them on a little graph and i'll put a little graph up on the screen in a moment so that you can see uh, how i've got those sizes and what they are now, obviously, your tyre truer will be different, so you will have to do it for your own tyre truer. 
also it depends on the size of the drum it depends on exactly how you've mounted your uh, adjustable carriage in your tire truer um, it depends on where you've stuck your sticker around your knob job etc etc so you have to set this up for your tire truer. and obviously if you ever move anything if you ever dismantle it and you move um, the drum etc inside maybe you replace the drum maybe you move this uh, adjustable carriage something like that you'll have to redo your uh, plots again so at that point there i'm expecting 18 mil so i'm expecting basically the drum to just skim my tire and no more so let's power it up there we go and basically it's just skimming the tire you can't really hear it too much I'm looking at the amp drawer on my power supply. My amp drawer is fairly steady, uh, so I know that uh, it, it's not really grinding anything off of my tire. I'm then gonna take my coarse diamond plate, and I'm just gonna start sanding off both ends of my tire, just to make it a little bit narrower to bring it more within width. Now you'd want to try and not get this too hot. If you start seeing smoke coming off of your tyres, you've got it too hot. You do not want to heat your tyres, because when you heat your tyres, it tends to take all the oils out of the rubber and you end up with a lot less grip from your rubber. So you don't, do not want to overheat your tyres. Not getting it too hot. You can always tell how hot it is, because you can touch the diamond hole and see how hot that is. And if that's, that's fine, that's you know not hot to the touch then keep going now you notice i'm doing this in a cardboard box because basically the tire dust goes absolutely everywhere and you get your bench absolutely covered in tire dust but having a little putting it in a little cardboard box helps control the dust and keep it all in one place see so i'm not heating the same bit of the tire again and again and again I'm allowing the other side to cool in between. So I'm trimming that down. There, come back to that side. And I like to leave it so that I just leave a fraction of rubber sticking out over the edge of the hub. You'll see why in a minute. Oh, I've still got a way to go there. There we go. So my edges now are much closer to the hubs so at the moment we're running at 17 mil which is a little bit too wide for bscra but i'm just going to leave it slightly over width for now until i take down the diameter a little bit because i'm going to leave the ends to cool a little bit in between now that i've done all my other tires i've put the original one back on again i've allowed it to cool and remember in the previous uh, part I'd set my dial to 18 millimeters so there it is I've also wound my stop so that it is literally just sitting on the 18 millimeters so at this point I'm going to take I'm going to adjust my wheel down to the size that I want my tires to be so I'm going to take this down to 17 millimeters so on here that's down to 0.85 on my dial now, 17 millimeters is quite large for a 30 second tire, but what I want to do is I want to be able to leave some rubber on my tire so that when I actually come to size it to the exact car I'm racing on for the length of race that I'm doing, etc., I'm leaving enough rubber to trim off so I've got some fresh rubber to actually race on. I don't want to take it all the way down to the optimum racing size and then leave it in my box for ages. So I like to actually be racing on fresh rubber. So I leave them bigger than I'm going to need them. Uh, maybe on a Intro 32 or a Genesis car, you might want to leave them slightly bigger um, if you're going to be doing a lot of club racing. But 17 mil is fine for most classes of car in 30 second. So I'm going to start my truer. I'm running my truer on nine volts. Some people like to run the truer on a much lower voltage, something like five volts. Um, it does reduce the heat slightly if you're a bit aggressive with your truing, but I'm not aggressive with my truing, so I don't get to get the tyre that hot. So I like running it on 9 volts. So I'm going to slowly turn this back. Now you can hear the sound of the tyre through a change. 
you can watch the amps on your power supply. I tend not to want to draw more than about an amp more than when it's free running is okay, but try and stick between a half an amp and an amp more. You don't want to go any more than that because then the tyre cooler is struggling too much and say so you're going to overheat your tyre. Again, if you've got smoke coming off your tyres, you're chewing them far too fast. Now at this point, I'm not turning anymore, I've reached my stop. So that's just free running now. The amps have pretty much returned to what they were before, free running. So the tyre is now clear of the drum. But I haven't adjusted my size, I've just wound it back off of the drum. And then I'm just going to trim the edges again of my tyre just to sand to make it slightly narrower again. A few moments later. There we go, so I've done back and front of my tyre. Let me just check the width again. Okay, so we're now down to 16.4, so that's very close. Now the tyre will probably contract a little bit as it cools, so I don't want to go down to exactly 16, take it slightly over, and then the tyre will cool and get slightly narrower. And if I need to trim a final bit off, just before the end, uh, I can. But again, leaving it slightly over width means that you can also trim and have fresh rubber on the sides of the tire as well. Now, but again, when it's all cooled down, the final thing I tend to do before putting them in some tire tubes or taking them off my truer, again, is I just tend to round the edges a fraction just to take any of the sharp edge off while it's just sitting in the box. I've seen some people turn them into like beach buggy tyres, you know, that are all sort of like um, all rounded far too much on the, on the corners. You don't need to do that. Just again, just take the worst of the sharp edge off the corner. Then you can remove them. And if you remember before, I lined the grub screw up so I know where the grub screw is. So the grub screw in the hub is lined up with the grub screw in the pulley. Take that off there. We can have a look. So. Having a little bit of a closer look, you can see, let me just move that out the way. So you can see that I've left a little bit of rubber sticking out over that edge. And this edge looks horrible at the moment, but you should be able to just remove that with your fingers, just like that, just to clean that up a little bit, clean out any rubber that's inside. So that's looking a little bit better, a little bit nicer now. But you can see I haven't gone right up to the edge of the hub. I've left a little bit of rubber on the outside of the hub. That just helps in accidents. Assuming your hubs are the right width, mind you, that just helps in accidents not to damage the hub on the edges. If you hit the walls, etc. the rubber gives a little bit of sponginess uh, and protects your hub from damaging accidents. You may have also noticed I made a little mark on the boss uh, of where the grub screw is. That's quite handy. Sometimes I also use a white paint pen, put a little blob on the tire like that, little mark, just so you can tell where the grub screw hole is on the tire for the future. That makes it very quick to see. You can see on this tire that there's a tiny little air bubble on the little edge there. Now, that was obviously inside the rubber, but it's not going to be great on the edge of my tyre. So, I might risk sanding it a little bit more on this outside edge, and then obviously it will disappear a little bit more as I take the diameter down to my final size. And then, probably by the time I've then rounded the edge a little bit, most of it will be gone. So I might be a bit lucky if that's not on the edge. But, as we're talking about the edges of tyres, you do not want to round your tyres too much. Obviously, by rounding your tyre a lot, you actually reduce the contact area on the track. So, if you round them too much, you actually end up with effect a narrower tyre. But that does have the effect of making your tyre move around on the track surface uh, much, much smoother, basically. It doesn't tend to dig in, it tends to slide more. And again, I would probably do it the same on the inside edge as you do on the outside edge. But having a look at those edges on there, that's about what I tend to do my tyres. 
Um, again, if I want the car to move around a bit more, I might round the tires a little bit more on the edges and then it would slide on track a little bit more. Again, if I want to really a lot of bite on my tires, I might not even round them quite as much as that. But the key thing is to make sure that this face of your tire runs true as well. I've seen some tires where the edges do this as they rotate. Now that's horrible because then when it runs on the edge of the tire on the track, it's putting vibrations through your car. So you want this edge of your tire and the inside edge to be to run perfectly true. Do not accept a tire where the edges are wobbly because then that vibration is just going to go through your car and the handling is going to be terrible. Even if it's balanced, it still will not work very well. So you want the edges to be nice and true. You want the circumference to be nice and true. You want a slight radius on each corner. Now I've seen also people that have overheated their tyres when they've trued them and they become conical um, on one, one edge or maybe they become concave so that they've actually sanded more away in the middle of their tyre than on the edges. Some people that use hubs with uh, rubber that overhangs a boss, sometimes they've sanded too much away on the uh, edges of the tyre where the tyre expands when it's rotating on the truer and then when they slow it down or it cools down it ends up with a, uh, a narrow a smaller diameter on the bit that's expanded before but you want a nice straight edge and the best way to tell is to put it into your calipers like that and see how does it sit in your calipers does it if I open those up a little bit more there does it fall through the calipers nicely and evenly both sides or does it sort of hang on one edge like that or does it hang on one edge and fall out like that because then you know whether or not your tyre is uh, parallel to your jaws. If that wasn't the case, if they did always fall through one side or fall through the other side which means you could have a smaller diameter on the inside or a smaller diameter towards the outside of the hub then you might need to adjust your tyre truer. Now you can, on your hoodie, you can ever so slightly adjust this part here by unbolting that bolt underneath and if you adjust and you can actually very slightly adjust this carriage here, you can twist it one way or you can twist it the other way so you can actually end up getting your tyres perfectly parallel to the drum. It probably doesn't take much, they're pretty close, but I have seen people that have got their tyre truers set up um, with this at a slight angle and then obviously they always end up with tyres that are conical either on the inside or the outside. So you can adjust this little block here slightly to get your axle running perfectly parallel with the face of the drum. So here we are finished tyres, cleaned up, ready to put in the tube, pair of tyres. You may have noticed they're not my favourite new style S&K hubs, in which case one would be offset, one wouldn't be offset. Uh, these, are, these are rubber that I'd glued up a little while ago on these hubs for some club racing. I've got some gears that have the boss completely turned off that I need to use up. So in that case, I can use a set of hubs with the bosses not offset. After getting your tires pretty much to the right size, as I say, leaving a little bit more to skim down just before the race to make sure you're on fresh rubber. The final thing is going to be to obviously get them the right size and then you're probably gonna to wanna to balance them. But that's another video. So please keep watching, keep subscribing um, if you know of anybody who likes these videos who hasn't subscribed, please get them to subscribe. It all helps and helps me keep creating these videos. I've got some excellent content to come in the future. Um, I'm still working on this big announcement. There's still some things to, that are going on behind the scenes. But we're getting there and there's going to be some great stuff coming on the channel very soon. So thanks again for watching. See you again.